In the 1800s, Charles Darwin came up with the theory of evolution, a theory that is still controversial to this day. In this theory, he said that humans, like animals, will not only face final oblivion when they die, but they will eventually become an extinct species. Unlike all other creatures on this planet, we are the only ones that know our time is limited and this knowledge shapes us as humans. Throughout history, the awareness has driven humans to search for a way out. Dying is seen as one of the saddest facts of human existence, so it is in our nature to try and find a way to avoid it, or at least delay it. But alas, life is fragile and time is unforgiving. However, this hasn't stopped people from dreaming. The search for immortality has been well documented throughout human history. Generally, it is believed that anyone with this power would seemingly have it all. From evidence in Greek and Roman mythology, to the stories of ancient and medieval alchemists to recent discoveries that might hold the secret to everlasting life. In this three-part series, we will cover the history of immortality, the reasons behind our aging, what could possibly stop it and what will happen if you one day actually make immortality a reality. Up until a couple of hundred years ago, life expectancy was around 30 in most parts of the world. Then, starting around 1840, it started to go up and gradually kept rising as civilization advanced. Today, life expectancy has increased significantly. So much so that in certain parts of the world it has almost tripled. For example, the average age of a Japanese woman is 87 years. Scientists are looking at the natural world for clues on how to sidestep growing old. Some even think that many of the ailments we call diseases could be thought of as symptoms of the most powerful disease of all, aging. In fact, for some species, death rates actually go down with age. So instead of getting sicker and sicker as you get older, you get healthier and healthier. To have all the same results, we would have to stall or reverse the process of cell aging called senescence, meaning over time, cells lose their ability to replicate and function properly. The problem is, we don't yet really know enough about what causes senescence. The oldest recorded human being to have ever lived was a French woman named Jean Cal. She was born in 1875 and died in 1997 at the age of 122. This age might one day become normal or even come to be considered young. Or perhaps the concept of age itself might one day become completely irrelevant. Stories and legends tell the tale of people achieving immortality, some willingly, others not. Maybe the answer to immortality lies in history. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. It is quite fascinating to see what our ancestors have to say on the subject. Let's start with the oldest known and recorded literature on immortality. The first known instance of the search for immortality is found in the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh, dating as far back as 2100 BC, is an ancient set of poems from Mesopotamia about a demigod king who ruled a land called Uruk. Gilgamesh was a very successful leader as he managed to create great cities and lands that were bountiful in harvest. However, he was also known to be a cruel despot who enslaved his people and raped any woman he fancied whenever he wanted. The gods felt that he was too cruel and created and sent a giant demigod wild man named Enkidu to stop him. After fighting together, the two actually became best friends and decided to team up to destroy a terrifying forest demon named Humbada in order to solidify their place in legend. While they were successful in this, they continued to attract more attention from the gods and eventually drew enough of their ire that the gods killed Enkidu. Gilgamesh was distraught and decided that he must find a way to avoid death itself so he would never have to suffer the same horrible fate as his best friend. 
So he began a quest to seek out a man who had survived a great flood, the Noah of ancient Sumerian tales, and a man who was said to be the only one gifted with immortality by the gods. When he actually found him, the old immortal told him that he was an utter exception and that the gods did not create men to live forever. Overcome with pity for Gilgamesh, just before he left Noah's place, the old immortal's wife convinced Noah to tell Gilgamesh of an herb that could make one young again. Gilgamesh managed to find this amazing herb, the very last one of its kind, in existence. But it was snatched out of his hand by a snake that ate it and immediately became young again before his very eyes. After this, Gilgamesh resigned himself to death, but he later came to the realization that as a human he could attain immortality in another way. Yes, by the deeds and the works he left behind. To this day, some people believe that the only way to find immortality is by painting great works of art like Michelangelo or by being a great athlete like Usain Bolt. The achievements live on and the fame keeps your memory alive forever. Now, let's look at a more current take on immortality. For centuries, religion has provided a way to escape death. At the heart of religions, practically all religions of the world, there are the offering of eternal life, time without end. For instance, in the medieval ages, Christianity described death as a phase, or to say, a natural continuation of life where we move from this world to a spiritual realm of salt. In other religions, the idea of immortality is centered around reincarnation or rebirth. One knows exactly how old this belief of immortality after death is, but we can date it as far back as the existence of the Neanderthals, who held rituals to bury their loved ones with the belief of an afterlife. Throughout history, Buddhist monks of various sorts have taken to remote mountainous regions in cloistered monasteries in order to ponder the mysteries of the universe and try to achieve some form of transcendence. While many Buddhist philosophies did not care much for one's physical form, there have been and still are some sects that not only care about a physical form, but actually believe that with the right process, they can make their physical bodies endure forever. In order to achieve this, they take part in a practice known as self-mummification. This gruesome practice begins with a special diet and training process that takes many, many years. As the date of mummification comes close, the aspirant eats a special diet that is supposed to help preserve the body, including an embalming solution that they drink. Then they seal themselves up inside a chamber and are buried with just the slightest air hole for breathing. They continuously ring a bell to signal that they are still meditating and when the bell stops ringing, the chamber is sealed completely. If they don't see any visible signs of decay, then they consider the self-mummification a success. It is their belief that these monks could one day wake up in hundreds or even thousands of years' time, when their wisdom is once again needed here on earth. It isn't just ancient monks and modern-day religions that seek after immortality. Ancient Greek mythology also recorded numerous characters and events of everlasting life. Many Greek myths involve mortals described to have extreme pride or hubris, and so many of them were punished to live forever because they had challenged or tricked the gods. For example, Sisyphus. In his early life he tried to trick Zeus, which resulted in him trapping Thanatos, the death personification in Greek mythology. This resulted in a world where nobody could die. This issue really bothered the god of war, Ares. Consequently, Sisyphus was punished to roll a boulder uphill during the day and then downhill during the night for all eternity. Something that would not take you an eternity is those like, share and subscribe buttons. Try it out and receive an extra lifetime of great content. I'm sure everyone has heard of the phrase Achilles heel. This is the guy it comes from. He was said to be a legendary Greek hero of the Trojan War. The story goes that when he was a baby he was dipped in the river Styx. 
the river that separated Earth from the underworld. This made him invulnerable to everything, even death itself, effectively making him immortal. Except for one thing, they held him in the river by his ankle, meaning that his ankle was completely vulnerable. He was eventually killed by a poisoned arrow to the ankle in a battle, thus bringing his immortality to a swift end. For a lot of people, immortality resides in a physical item of sort, and throughout history in diverse cultures, legends and religions, these items play a prominent role as the key to everlasting life. Let's look at a few examples. Early Grail is one of the most well-known pieces in Christian mythology. Even Indiana Jones knew about it. It is known as the Boulder Cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. It is also believed to be the container that Joseph of Amarathea collected Christ's blood in at the cross. It is said that even King Arthur and his knights went far and wide looking for the Holy Grail. Sir Galahad is said to have become immortal as he was the only man that was able to touch it. It is believed that only the purest of souls would be able to get hold of the Holy Grail. Then there is Ambrosia sometimes known as the nectar of gods, often referred to in ancient Greek mythology. It is the food and drink of the gods. Ambrosia literally means immortality in Greek. It is derived from the Greek word ambrotos, which combines the prefix a, meaning not, with mbrotos, meaning mortal. In mythology, this food and drink is said to have brought longevity or immortality to whoever consumed it. It was brought to the gods in Olympus by those and it was served by Ganymede at the heavenly feast. The consumption of ambrosia was usually reserved for divine beings and can be seen in stories like when Hercules is given ambrosia by Athena upon his transition into immortality. There is also the elixir of immortality, also known as the elixir of life, a mythical substance believed to grant those who consume it eternal life. Various civilizations throughout human history had their own version of this elixir and its secret contents. Another substance written about as giving eternal life are magic mushrooms. No, not a trippy kind that makes you think you are immortal. As early as 475 before Christ, there are written records that refers to the mushroom of immortality which, apparently, is the key ingredient in the elixir of life. The Lungzi, which is translated to supernatural mushroom, is the oldest known mushroom to be used medically. According to the Book of Han, people who are masters of esoterica, alchemists and musicians, known as the Fang Shi, near the secret location on Mount Penglai, where these immortality mushrooms grew. A lot of people went on expeditions to search for these mushrooms of immortality, but to no avail. While these mushrooms are still used in traditional Chinese medicine to this day, it doesn't seem to work quite as advertised. The Fountain of Youth has been written about for thousands of years. It is said to be the spring that allegedly restores the youth of anyone who is lucky enough to bathe in or drink the water. There are so many stories of the mythical fountain of youth. It has led many explorers and adventurers to set out in search of it. It became associated with the Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon, who was the first governor of Puerto Rico. It is said that while he was searching for the fountain of youth, he actually found Florida in 1513. Legend goes that at the time when he was in Florida, the indigenous people told him that he could find a fountain of youth in Bimini. Then there are factual events that inspired fictional stories most of us know today. When most people think of immortality, religion, supernatural creatures, mythology or rituals come to mind. Just look at how popular vampires are today. But let's put aside myth for a moment and look at some real life examples. Elizabeth Bathory, the blood countess, did whatever she could to get a hold of younger people's blood. She has a reputation similar to that of Vlad Impaler, the inspiration behind Dracula. And well, Vlad Tepish, scope of mayhem may have been larger. Bathory may have had him beat when it comes to sheer sadism. 
during her reign of terror, before King Matthias II sent people to inspect the castle after many horror stories, she was rumored to have tortured and murdered as many as 650 peasant girls. In the end, she would only be convicted of killing about 80 of them. Bathory was a uniquely sadistic individual, a real problem child if ever there was one. But it was as she started to get older and really start to play out her most sadistic fantasies that she made a discovery that caused her to go even more full tilt into her insane habits. Legend has it that after striking a young servant girl so hard that she bled, Baffery noticed later that the blood on her hands seemed to revitalize her skin. After that incident, Baffery started bathing in blood as part of her beauty regime to keep her skin young and began capturing, torturing and killing more and more peasant girls to maintain her youthful figure. While it's hard to say, if she really thought it would keep her immortal or simply slow her aging, her thirst for blood quickly became unquenchable. The vitality of a younger person's blood has been something cultures have long believed could potentially increase the lifespan of older people. The truth is that there is more of a market for that kind of thing than most people realize. Some studies have shown that older mice transfused with the blood of younger mice showed rejuvenation and lived longer. Although, we don't yet have studies that demonstrate that the same is true for humans. To make matters even weirder, there are people who believe that drinking menstrual blood may also help you stay young. This is known as the most common method to date. Most practitioners of this bizarre practice don't even use proper medical methods to get the blood into their body, such as transfusion. Now, there is some limited evidence that shows there may be some stem cells in menstrual blood which could potentially be partly restorative. But the problem is that you would be very unlikely to attain that benefit simply by drinking it. So let's just move on. You might recognize this guy's name from the Harry Potter franchise as the immortal wizard who created the Philosopher's Stone and was a good friend of Dumbledore. Well, that fiction is based on the real Nicolas Flamel. He was a French scribe born in 3030 and records show that he died in 1418. However, hundreds of years later, in the 1700s, stories have started to emerge that he was still alive. People said that he was an alchemist who had discovered a real philosopher's stone and achieved immortality. Some believe that Flamel faked his own death and went into hiding to protect this powerful artifact from getting into the wrong hands. And that he is still out there somewhere. There were once a train of thought that believed if a human consumed certain metals, they would take on the properties of being strong and indestructible. Flawed logic aside, this really was the way of thinking at some point. Mercury was especially a metal that was astounding to alchemists. A metal that is liquid state at room temperature, it was like magic. Well, the metal poisoning that occurred in the name of immortality certainly was not magical. The Roman god Mercury is the equivalent to the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian deity Thoth. All of these figures are said to have consumed liquid gold or white drops in order to achieve immortality. And it's these stories that caused ancient and medieval alchemists to believe that if they could either find a way to suspend gold in liquid form or mix gold and mercury together, then they would have found the recipe to immortality. Qin Shi Huang is the best example of what happens when metal is seen as the solution to death. He was a famous Chinese emperor and also the first emperor of the unified China. His dynasty even lasted 400 years. Some of the most famous works under his rule include the Terracotta Army and parts of the Great Wall of China. He was said to be so loved by his people that they thought of him as immortal. This was a prophecy Qin Shi was more than happy to fulfill and he became obsessed with seeking immortality. 
On two occasions, he sent hundreds of people out into the world to find the legendary elixir of immortality. Needless to say, both times were a failure. In the end, he died of mercury poisoning after he ate too many mercury pills given to him by his doctors to try and make him immortal. Now, let's turn our attention to more current affairs. Maybe immortality is much closer to our doorsteps than we think. As we have seen so far, if you look at the history of immortality, a lot of it is just hocus pocus, some sort of unreal magical tale or even what tends to insanity in some cases. Yet, the wise words of Arthur C. Clarke may inspire us to look at it a bit differently. Magic is just science we don't understand yet. A lot of things we thought were impossible in the past have been made possible thanks to our scientific understanding of everything that has rapidly improved over the past 40 years. And it's not slowing down anytime soon. Certain scientists, futurists and philosophers have theorized about the immortality of the human body and posted it that human immortality is achievable within the 21st century. Absence of aging would provide humans with biological immortality, but not invulnerability to death by physical trauma. Although mind uploading could solve that issue. Take for instance, the small company called Nectome, which believes they can actually embalm and preserve the brain so that they one day can upload the contents of it to the cloud. The process would basically be akin to assisted suicide as embalming and preserving the brain for later use is still to date a fatal process. If it did work, theoretically, you could keep someone's consciousness alive by preserving their brain and transferring it to some kind of robot body, thus allowing them to live forever. Exciting or scary? Let us know what you think. We would love to hear your take on it. To wrap things up, it was Henry Ford that said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you are probably right. So what do you think? Is immortality achievable? Will the legendary philosopher's stone be discovered one day? Or maybe a recipe buried away in some ancient cookbook? Do you think science will have a breakthrough in our lifetimes? Or Will our research and writing simply become part of legend as we see the stories of old from today's perspective? Either way, one thing is certain. As it stands right now, our sands of time has been measured out. Are our glasses filled? The sand is running and there is not much you can do about it. Thanks for watching. Please join us for part two next time, where we take a closer look at a science of why we age and whether there actually is anything immortal on earth. We will give you a hint. The answer is yes. See you next time.